The first lesson is titled, How to Find Your Own Aladdin's Lamp. When I was a little girl growing up in Tianjin and Shanghai, China, my aunt Baba, and for those of you who've read Chinese Cinderella, you might remember her, my aunt Baba used to sit beside me and teach me one Chinese word a day. Yi zi yi ru. This is how it's written. Yi zi yi ru. Now, in those days, there was no computer. And uh, on the rare occasions when she was away from home, she would send me a letter every day enclosing her daily word. She told me it was a special gift to me. I remember waiting anxiously at the door for the postman to appear whenever my aunt was gone. Now that my aunt is dead and I'm old, let's pretend that you're my little niece or nephew and I am your Aunt Baba. At regular intervals, I will send you emails, which will bring you lists of Chinese words. If at all possible, try to learn at least one word per day, preferably more. Think of the words as my gift to you. Unlike English, Chinese is a pictorial language. Every word is a picture and needs to be memorized. Since there's no Chinese alphabet, there's no connection between the image of a Chinese word and its pronunciation. Two revolutionary innovations in the 20th century made the learning of Chinese much, much easier. The first is the invention of the computer, and the second is the introduction of ping yin. Think of your computer as your very own Aladdin's lamp. Within it lurks a genie longing to do your bidding. Instead of rubbing your lamp, you need to click certain keys on your computer to awaken the genie. I'll show you how to do this. When you've clicked those keys in the correct order, a genie will emerge and enable you to switch back and forth between typing in English or Chinese on your computer. Imagine, by the end of this lesson, you will be typing Chinese characters on your own computer screen all by yourself, and perhaps even sending me a letter written in Chinese on my website. Who says learning Chinese is hard? I don't think so. I don't think it is hard at all for a smart person like you. Since every Chinese word is a picture, and there is no way of knowing how a word is pronounced by its appearance, the Chinese developed a method in 1958 to match the pronunciation of Chinese words to the 26 letters of the alphabet. First, they declared Mandarin, the dialect spoken in Beijing, to be the official dialect of China. Then they used letters of the alphabet to pronounce Chinese words. This is called ping ying. The word ping is written this way. but spelled P-I-N, means to put together. The word ying is written this way, means sound. And uh, thus, pinging means the putting together of the sound with its symbol. And uh, in this way, we know how to, uh, um, how to pronounce Chinese words. When you look at the word ping, you would not know that it, its pronunciation is ping. But on the computer, if you should type P-I-N under the Chinese option, this character will come out. And on the computer, if you should type Y-I-N, this character will come out. Previous to the introduction of pinyin, the English spelling of Chinese characters was variable and depended entirely on the native dialect of the speller or translator. Since Hong Kong was a British colony for 150 years, between 1847 and 1997, and the dialect spoken there is Cantonese, many Chinese words were pronounced and spelt by 
and spelt in English by Cantonese-speaking translators. Cantonese sounds entirely different from Mandarin, the dialect spoken in Beijing. For example, the name of the leader of China during the Second World War was Jiang Jie Shi. The three characters, the three Chinese characters, Jiang Jie Shi, are pronounced Jiang Gai Se in Cantonese, but Jiang Jie Shi in Mandarin. Same three characters, but entirely different pronunciation and spelling. There are many other examples of the widely differing pronunciation of Chinese words between Mandarin and Cantonese. For instance, Hong Kong. Hong Kong is spelled H-O-N-G-K-O-N-G because in Cantonese, Hong Kong is pronounced Hong Kong, but in Mandarin, the same two characters, Hong Kong or Hong Kong, is pronounced Xiang Gang. And uh, uh, if you should try to type the word Xiang in uh, or Hong, you're not able to type H O N G for the word to come out. It will have to be X I A N G because that's standardized pinyin spelling of the word for Hong Kong, Hong. And Gong is spelled G A N G. Beijing is pronounced Paking in Cantonese, but Beijing in Mandarin. So Bei, which means nor north, Jing means capital. So Beijing actually means northern capital. Nanjing is pronounced Nanking or Nanking. That was the old spelling. But now it's spelled N-A-N for Nan and J-I-N-G for Jing, which uh, means the southern. Nan means south, and Jing means capital. Introduction of Pinyin in 1958 was a momentous event. For the first time in history, the pronunciation and spelling of Chinese characters was standardized throughout China and the world. If pinyin had not been invented or introduced, I would not be able to teach you Chinese via the internet. Whenever you type the letters YI, in under the Chinese option, the, the, the word for E, which is the, uh, the uh, Chinese uh, character, meaning the number one, will come out on your computer under the Chinese option. And there is a, a number next to each Chinese character, E, and then there could be Yi and other Chinese characters, Yi, and so on. So if you, type, if you type the Arabic numeral 1, the Chinese character 1 will be on your computer screen. So all these characters and many, many more are pronounced Yi, but you cannot help looking at all the other characters when you are searching for your character one. So it is a way of learning almost subconsciously the pronunciations of many other Chinese characters when you type pinyin. Of the three well-known Chinese cities, Xiangang, Hong Kong, Beijing, Peking, or Nanjing, Nanking, you might have heard their names pronounced before and spelt in the Cantonese dialect, Hong Kong, Peking, and Nanking. However, when you have mastered the art of pinyin, you'll be able to type the names of the cities in Chinese on your computer and, not, and know the actual meaning of each word, of each character, as you type. For instance, Hong Kong, the word for Hong or in Mandarin is Xiang. 
It's, it's spelled X-I-A-N-G because in Mandarin it's pronounced xiang. And it means fragrant. And the word for gang is pronounced gang. Xiang gang, Hong Kong in Cantonese, Hong Kong or uh, Xiang gang. So this word actually means fragrant, and this word means harbor. So when you look at this, remember this means Xiang means fragrant, and Gang means harbor, and therefore Xiang Gang means fragrant harbor. That is the meaning of Xiang Gang or Hong Kong. Then you, the, the, uh, the next uh, city is Beijing. Bei. Beijing. Bei means north, Jing means capital, Beijing, northern capital. Now when you look at this word, from now on you will know this means north. When you look at this word, from now on, remember, this means capital. The third city is Nanjing, and Nanjing, this, this character means, Nan, means south, and this character is the same as this character, that means southern capital. So every time you see this word, you will remember that it means capital. And uh, this is the, 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 the southern capital, and this is the northern capital. So the good news is that you've already learned quite a few Chinese words. Yi, that means one. Zi, word. Ru, means day. Pinyin, means putting together the sound with the word. Xianggang means Hong Kong. Beijing means northern capital. Or Nanjing, southern capital. More than that, be, you recognize these characters. And you also know their pronunciation and meaning. The words I will be sending you belong to a group that has been carefully selected. Why did I select those particular words to teach you? Because they are the most frequently used words in China. After a few weeks, you'll be able to read a menu in a Chinese restaurant, find the airport or train station in a Chinese city, or even read the names of shops next time you visit Chinatown. When you've learned 1,000 of these chosen words, it seems like a lot, but actually, it will take less than a year to do so. You'll be able to read 90% of the words printed in Chinese books and newspapers. So come with me on this exciting journey to the land of Chinese characters. Remember, I'll be writing to you regularly from now on. Now that you're serious about learning Chinese, I'd advise you to buy a special folder for this purpose. Write the words Chinese characters on the top line. On the second line, write yi zi, yi ru. That means one Chinese word per day. On the third line, you're making me a promise. And you are saying to me, I promise to learn at least one Chinese word per day. And I hope you keep your promise. There are uh, three ways you can practice your Chinese. The first way, you can print my emails, keep them in a file, and read them from time to time. The second way, you copy the Chinese characters I email you into an exercise book in your own handwriting. As you write, pronounce that word out loud. That's what Aunt Baba told me to do when I was a little girl. But it's cumbersome and old-fashioned. The third, the fastest, best, and most efficient way to learn Chinese is to type Chinese characters on your computer screen repeatedly using pinyin. I'll be teaching you how to do this. Practice typing each word at least 20 times, preferably more, while pronouncing that word over and over. Print the typed characters on your paper together with their pinyin and meaning 
and keep the pages in your Chinese character folder. For example, I just told you the Chinese character for north is bei, pronounced bei, down and up in pinyin. On your computer screen, open a Word document and type B-E-I. And the character bei, this character will come out after you've uh, you've uh, found your genie in your Aladdin's lamp, which I'm going to show you how. So type B E I B E I B E I B E I B E I B E I 20 times or more. By the time you finish, you know that the symbol B E I is pronounced B E I and means north. So now we begin the most important part of the lesson, which is finding, finding and learning how to use your own Aladdin's lamp. Let's begin with the first Chinese word that you've just learned. How about beginning with e, e, which is the Chinese character for one. E in Chinese is a single horizontal line, and is pronounced e in pinyin, it is the, and spelled yi, it is the most frequently used word in China. Now copy e 10 times while saying e, 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 what can be easier? The character e is spelled yi in pinyin and pronounced like the letter e except in a higher tone. E. When the two letters y and i are typed together on the computer, under the Mandarin language option, the Chinese character E appears. The computer is a magical toy, which is especially suited to learning Chinese. Because of pinyin, every character can be effortly, effortlessly written, typed, and printed on a sheet of paper by the computer. Previous to the invention of the computer, Chinese printers were large and complicated pieces of machinery because every character had to be separately carved and stored. Nowadays, it's a different matter. Using pinyin, every Chinese character can be made to appear instantaneously on your computer screen by simply typing a few between two and five letters of the 26 letters of the alphabet. In China, the use of pinyin has reduced the illiteracy rate of Chinese peasants from 80% to less than 10%. Chinese children and grown-ups send millions, if not billions, of text messages daily to one another on their mobile telephones using pinyin. Chinese parents complain that their children are forgetting how to write Chinese characters with pen and ink. Just how, how complicated is that to write nan and have to remember every single stroke? I often forget the sequence myself. But how easy is that to know that when you type N-A-N, this character comes out on your computer and is correct every single time. The kids reply to their parents that they can communicate preferably, perfectly adequately via pinging like the children of China, you will also be able to type, read, and speak Chinese words via pinging in a very, very, very short time. That I promise you, if you pay attention and do your homework. The Chinese characters that I will send you and teach you are already stored in your computer. Think of your computer as your very own Aladdin's lamp. Clicking on it is like rubbing your lamp. Instead of a genie, a message appears, which leads you to the next step. By reading my emails, you arrive at your very own treasure chest, whereby clicking a few letters of the alphabet will bring you the Chinese character you are searching for. This is my gift to you. How do you find and activate your own Aladdin's lamp? Now, some, some people and grown-ups and children are afraid of fiddling with or adding functions to their computer. But unfortunately, 
this is a vitally crucial step to install the Chinese language option onto your computer in order to learn your Chinese characters. The Chinese language option will enable you to access the Chinese pinyin, which is built into every computer. Without your Aladdin's lamp, it would take much, much longer to learn Chinese. One of my students compared learning Chinese without the computer, he says, was like playing tennis without a racket. If you have difficulty, ask your parents, teacher, or big sister or brother to help you. But I believe the majority of, of you can do this by following my directions, which I will outline step by step on this video for you. You need to find uh, and awaken the genie in your Aladdin's lamp before you can type Chinese characters on your computer screen. And I will show you how to do that.